Good. Okay. Um, so a couple of things uh, about what we were doing. One, we talked about taking notes and how to take notes and writing headings down. So you all yesterday were reading for a purpose. Uh, I tried to make it a little bit easier today. Technically, you're still using your literacy skills. You're still reading and skimming. Uh, it wasn't worded exactly the same, but it still should have been uh, pretty easy to find out. Um, again, we're still focusing on the ideas at the foundation of our country. We're talking about natural rights. Please help me out. How did the ideas of Locke influence the founders of our country? Uh, he wrote a book called The Two Treaties of Government. In that book, he imagined what life would be like state of nature. in a state of nature. A state of nature is life without laws, laws or regulation. Government. Government. Laws or government, if you were using the book properly. Uh, he came up with ideas about human nature. He came up with ideas about the purpose of government. I'm just going. I'm sorry, I'm not waiting. I'm just going to go. Um, he also came up with ideas about the kinds of government to either obey or resist. He actually says sometimes it's important to resist government. Uh, all of these ideas, natural rights philosophy, uh, was used in the Declaration of Independence and many of the state constitutions. What were Locke's ideas about natural rights? If you don't have it, fill it in as we go. Um, he believed that everybody's entitled to life, meaning people should be safe and that they should be free from threats. He also believed in liberty. Everybody should have liberty. People should be free as possible to make their own decisions. And he believed in property as a natural right. People should own the things that they need to survive, and they should be free to profit from their work. Natural rights belong to people simply because they are human. They are not man-made. They are not man-made. Okay. To come up with these ideas, he imagined uh, the state of nature. We talked about Thomas Hobbes and what he said about a state of nature. Locke is a little bit different. Locke said people are basically good or reasonable. There are some people who are only interested in themselves. I think we can see that even in this class. Strong people will try to control weak people or abuse, control or abuse. Weak people will then try to unite or join together to gain strength. In a state of nature, nobody's natural rights will be safe because there are no rules to protect anyone. There's nothing that says you're not allowed to do that. Does laws count? Laws or rules, that's fine. So people create governments for laws and protection. However, nobody has the right to rule anyone unless consent is given. The, the power of legitimate, very important, legitimate government comes from the consent of the people. Okay, and so finally, here's the reasons why people form a social contract. We've talked about social contracts already. The best way to protect each, person, each person's natural rights is to create and agree to live under the laws of a government. I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. He said everybody has liberty. You're as free as possible. However, once you agree to a contract, each person consents to obey the limits placed on them. You actually give up some of your freedom to be protected. Each person gains the security. What if we put knowledge? No. Okay. It doesn't quite work. Each person gains the knowledge of knowing. The knowledge of knowing. 
the security of knowing that their rights to life, liberty, and property are protected. Finally, the purpose of government is to protect our natural rights, according to John Locke. And that is in our Declaration of Independence. Each person natural gains rights. what? Each person gains the security of knowing that their rights to life, liberty, and property are protected. The purpose of government is to protect our natural rights, according to John Locke. And again, that's in the Declaration of Independence. What about the 